Isn't that a beautifully tranquil setting? Wildlife, the sun's in the sky, what more could I want? It was in a Dutch dike, very similar to this one, that world champion Steve Webster crashed his LCR way back in the 80s. That's a famous bit of footage. Have you any idea where we are? You've got it, of course. It's the world famous TT circuit at Assen, and we're here for round seven of the Eastern Airways British F1 Sidecar Championship. The previous round at Donington saw drama aplenty with Sean Hegarty and James Neve coming away from the Leicestershire circuit, 45 points clear of Roger Lovelock and Aki Alto. But behind them, Craig Chaplow and Patrick Farrets are now just one point behind third place Mark Edwards and Lee Barrett. Edwards won't be riding. He's still nursing a broken leg from motocross. So let's then have a look at the table as they come to us. There is that 45-point gap at the top. Edwards, as I say, just one point clear of Chaplow, won't be riding, so Chaplow really has a chance here to go third. Peach Brown, Holland, what a dismal season he's having, and Ricky Stevens there as well. Horsepole getting quicker, Sander Faber not with him, it's James Connell. A good crowd here at Aston, how the Dutch love their F1 sidecars. The weather was good as well. Sensational qualifying for Steve Kershaw and Rob Wilson on the Blink Body Quarry Suzuki. They are going from strength to strength, this pair from the borders. Similarly, Tony Brown and Ashley Hawes were pulling their bike around quickly. Great performance as well from Ricky Stevens and Ryan Charlwood. On the front row, Sean Hegarty and James Neve just ahead of the Lovelock Aki Alto pairing. We're going to take a look at race one right from the thick of the action in the middle of the pack as it happened. And Hegarty, from the word go, got the drop. Lovelock tried to come across a very fast starting Ricky Stevens. There was a bit of contact, you saw the smoke. But what a start by Steve Kershaw, who leapt into second place. Very quickly underneath him, though, went Roger Lovelock and Aki Alto. Sean Hegarty and James Neve, meanwhile, were taking advantage of these three crews tripping each other up. Ricky Stevens using all the track and more very quickly dispensed with Steve Kershaw and Rob Wilson, but they stayed very much in the hunt. The driver Wolf Laxton BMW of Lovelock went wide underneath went Stevens a very determined Ricky Stevens on the assured office solutions Kawasaki they were now up into second place the pit board and the message from his young lady telling the story Hegarty though by this time was some six seconds clear the battle for second and third very much alive Lovelock reclaiming second place underneath Stevens on the chicane into the start finish straight and with one lap to go, you can see how far ahead Hegarty was. Right up close action with James Lee. What a great pairing this crew have turned out to be in 2014. No one in sight. This 2.8 mile acid circuit suiting Hegarty and Lee very well. Looking back then for Lovelock who claims second place. Stevens narrowly beat Kershaw to the run-in for the final podium place. There it is confirmed, 5.03 seconds the gap. Stevens there in third, Kershaw, Tony Brown, Ashley Hall's fifth. Ian Guy, a resurgent Ian Guy and Ben Ransley, a brilliant sixth, ahead of Case Kentrock, fastest of the local men in eighth. Craig Chaplow scored points, that's all he needed to do. Holden, Holland struggling on a borrowed bike in 13, but better than nothing. yesterday saw a sensational fourth and I think that's probably a career best for Steve Kershaw and Rob Wilson you were really on it Steve great result yeah it was good uh, just everything's sort of clicking together you know the bike feels really good and we're feeling good on the bike confidence is high and it was good yeah smoothness happiness it's a happy camp all that sort of thing counts though Rob doesn't it yeah, very much so. Uh, it was a bit of a struggle in qualifying just because you're coming straight out. You've no free practice. We haven't been here for two years. So uh, it was all a bit fraught on Friday, but Saturday everything just clicked. Steve is just absolutely billiard table smooth on the bike. Makes my job so much easier and uh, absolutely loved it. Steve, 
I've said in commentary many times, and I hope you don't mind me saying it again, but a year ago, you were on the surgeon's table for heart surgery. That's an incredible achievement to come back and ride the way you're doing. Is there something in your head that tells you you're now 100% fit, I'm going to go for it? Yeah, it's, it's, a, it's, it's quite a tricky one, to be honest. It, it's just one of those things that you just got to... It had to be done, and it was done, and, you know, I believe in myself and what I can do and, and, and was happy to, to, you know, they'd said to me that I would be fit to race and and here we are. That's good enough. That's Steve, good enough. well done. What a brilliant, brilliant result. And Rob, you're just hanging in there, mate. You know, hats off. It's fantastic, isn't it? We've got a race to run. The next time you see me, we'll be on the grid. Cheers. What a brilliant ride Ian Guy and Ben Ramsley had in the first race. Through goes pole position man and first race winner Sean Hegarty and James Neve. Lining up along, so, alongside them will be Roger Lovelock and Aki Alto. But I'm waiting to form up here and here he comes through. Swing round Kenny, just over there. Number 29, Steve Kershaw and Rob Wilson. A stunning fourth place. Looking back further down the grid, if you can get it, Craig Chaplow. Number 73, the only man to score points in every single round, is now third in the championship. Well, a good job of work done already by Craig Chaplow, but this man does not have an answer. Roger Lovelock, who we're talking about, over there, the green and orange bike, does not have an answer to Sean Hegarty and James Neve, although admittedly his bike is the slowest. He just seems to be so smooth and so fast in the overall reckoning. But look how quick Lovelock comes off through the middle, though. A cheeky Ricky Stevens, and he's heading for the lead of the race as they go down the straight into the first turn. But Hegarty, round, oh, a bit of bumping and boring by Ian Guy. That really unsettled Stevens and Ryan Charwood. They're going backwards down the order, but I've never seen Ian Guy in such determined mood. There he is, underneath goes Tony Brown and Ashley Horse. Race leaders then, Sean Hegarty and James Lee for the second time here at Assam. But Lovelock is much more in touch, leading the chasing bunch. They're all stringing out behind. The Driver Wolf BMW, the green BMW, should be a lot quicker than Hegarty's Suzuki here. Look at Kershaw, Kershaw and Wilson, the number 29 Blink Body Quarry Suzuki up to third. And they're ahead of a determined looking Tony Brown and Horse. Chaplow is in there having a much better start. There's Tony Brown and Ashley Horse. Craig Chaplow, Patrick Farrance on the team EA Motorsport, number 73, in the back, right behind Tony Brown there. Second place with Lovelock. On the back wheel of Hegarty. Hegarty is not getting away this time. We're late in the day here at Assen. It's a low sun. It's a 2.8 mile, very fast flowing circuit. Out goes number 77, one of the Dutch crews. That's Case Endervelt. And let me tell you, that bike is loaned by the Dutch Federation for a first time driver. They loan it every season. You can jump on that bike and learn your craft. It's then up to you to fund your own effort. Lovelock right with him. He's closing now. Hegarty is not running away with this race at the conclusion of the first lap. We've got a race at the front for the lead. We've got a race just behind for third place. And Steve Kershaw, Rob Wilson are fighting tooth and nail to stay ahead of Tony Brown. And they failed. Brown, though, runs wide on the paymundo.com Yamaha. Underneath again, back up to third, it's Kershaw. A terrific scrap so early in the race. Come on, lads, there's a long way to go. But Stephen Kershaw just getting faster and faster and faster. And he is the best of the rest at the moment in third place. Tony Brown, Ashley Hawes, 57, right with him. Then comes Craig Chaplow and Patrick Farrance on the number 73 Team EA Motorsport. Ricky Stevens making ground again behind Chaplow. Ricky Stevens and Ryan Charwood on the team assured Office Solutions Kawasaki. Kershaw, though, just so smooth. His father's prepared that bike beautifully. This is Andy Peach and Charlie Richardson chasing their teammates on the L&W Suzuki. Both L&W, Dave Walton sponsored. Peach is by Ian Guy. Ian Guy and Ben Ramsey having a cracking assen. And it is a resurgent, rejuvenated Ian Guy, former GP veteran in years gone by, Ian Guy. Having said that, he's nothing like as old as I am. 
and uh, looked very capable on that LW Suzuki. Kershaw. Is he going to stay ahead? Ricky Stevens then looking at the back of Craig Chapel and Patrick Barrett. Stevens and Charlwood, the sole remaining assured offer solutions Kawasaki now that Edwards has been sidelined with that motocross in injury are through. I almost said industry then, but of course motocross is an industry, just as Formula One sidecar racing is an industry. Through goes Tony Brown. Ashley Hawes, former world champion passenger, knows Assen very, very well indeed. But Steve Kershaw is not going to give up. The Steve Kershaw of two seasons ago would have settled for that, thinking, I'll take fourth, I'll take fifth, I'll take sixth. Not this Steve Kershaw. He is very much on the case now. He knows he can run with them, and he is running with them. Tony Brown, another one of our young hopefuls. Badly needed young blood in this sport, and we're certainly seeing it run now at the front of this battle for the podium places here. Kershaw, Rob Wilson, not giving an inch. Ricky Stevens, Ryan Charwood now closing, having dispatched Craig Chaplow. Kershaw then throwing it round the bends. There's the battle at the front. Lovelock still very much in touch with Hegarty, the race leader. On lap three of ten. The battle settling down, but it's still very frantic behind the leading two. We are going to take a short break. Welcome back to Assen, and what a cracking race we've got here. Look how close they are. Ian Guy is having a whale of a time leading this freight train of activity. And I can tell you, everybody behind him is an accomplished F1 sidecar racer. So Ian Guy and Ben Ramsley doing a cracking job, as indeed are the race leaders, Sean Hegarty and James Neath, the number 33 yellow and purple bike, but chased all the way this time by Roger Lovelock and Aki Alto at half race distance. Five laps completed. Uh, we're on lap five in actual fact, almost five laps completed here at the Assen circuit. Third place, Tony Brown and Ashley Halls have now broken the toe from Ricky Stevens and Steve Kershaw. And then chasing hard now, coming up to have a bit of a go to play. Andy Peach and Charlie Richardson making amends for a sluggish start they're on the back of kershaw there's the third place man number 57 paymundo.com there goes stevens there goes kershaw here comes andy beach l and w bmw spinning spinning lost the back end kept it running what's he gonna lose any more places he's lost one place for sure was that ian guy who went by him i don't know let's have a look andy peach then back in business but he's lost places yes it is Ian Guy right behind him now. So Andy Peach lost ground, got past, slipped into the clutches of the chasing bunch, and they're on his case. Talking of case, there is case. Case Kentrop, number 81, the leading Dutch competitor. We've got a whole load of Dutch crews complementing the grid here. 24 cycles we had on the line for the start of this second race. And uh, the Dutch, it's fair to say, being outclassed here by what is a world-class entry. Simon Gilbert and John Allen in the gravel. Looks as though they went in the gravel backwards. Ian Guy has got his hand in the air. He has retired, so two retirements on lap six. Gilbert, John Allen out of the running. And uh, Ian Guy and Ben Ramsley in pit lane after such a fantastic result in race one. There they are retiring. Obviously a mechanical problem. Both rider and passenger fit and well, but now we've got the battle on for third place. Tony Brown, Ashley Hawes, Ricky Stevens, Ryan Charwood at it tooth and nail. Steve Kershaw, Rob Wilson, number 29, still very much in touch. And this is the battle for the final podium place. Brown wants it, Stevens senses he can get it, and Kershaw just waiting there like a Labrador for the crumbs to fall off the table could inherit the whole lot if things go pear-shaped for the two in front of him. Kershaw tucked in then in fifth place, keeping a watching brief over the two outfits ahead. Ricky Stevens now throwing caution to the wind, dare I say. We're looking ahead from Ricky Stevens. Fantastic onboard footage at Tony Brown and Ashley Hawes, plying his trade beautifully in the paymundo.com 
sidecar across the apex of the chicane, clipping across the grass. Not sure if that's AstroTurf or real grass, doesn't matter. We're not supposed to be on it. Stevens up the inside, is he going to go through? Oh, wow, across the front goes Tony Brown. Much, much faster line sweeping in from the outside to clip the apex. 3.1 seconds the gap now between the race leader and Roger Lovelock chasing. This the view from Steve Kershaw and Rob Wilson, just watching, watching, watching. Uh, Ricky Stevens looks like the one most likely to come unstuck here, but he's been passed, I think. Kershaw is by, made it stick. Stevens did go wide, got on the rumble strip, lost a bit of time, and that's all it took. Kershaw was by in the twinkling of an eye. Now, Ricky Stevens has got it all to do again to get past the man from the borders. It's going to be very interesting when we get to Silverstone to see if Stephen Kershaw can maintain this run of form because he's certainly riding an inspired race here in race two at Assen. You can see how low the sun is. This presents a little bit of a problem for the teams when they're heading into the sun, just as they are now. Their visors will be seeing something very similar to what we're experiencing on the camera lens, glazing over and glare on lap seven of ten. So two and a half laps of this 2.8 mile Assen circuit to go. Six left-hand bends, 11 right-hand bends, so predominantly right-handed, and some of the right-handers are very, very fast indeed. A good crowd here in the grandstands all the way along the start finish straight how oh, who's that gone out that looks like tony brown out of the running he's certainly momentarily slowed as i speak he's back on song and chasing albeit now in fifth but he definitely on the exit from the chicane put his hand up and slowed the other two shot past kershaw now in third is he going to be able to maintain that third place tony brown working hard to re-establish himself on the podium but he's got a bit to do he's underneath underneath ricky stevens and a fantastic move slews it sideways but he's by that's all it takes that was a determined overtaking move by tony brown and ashley Hawes. stevens though fighting back they are at it hammer and tongs this pair combined ages i guess something like 58 something around that so they're youngsters both of them just as the guy ahead of them is a youngster we're seeing the young blood here in the eastern airways british f1 sidecar championship dueling like only young guys can look at stevens through he goes kershaw fights back a terrific scrap here behind what is already a supreme effort by Sean Hegarty and James Neve out at the front of this race, chased by Lovelock. This, I remind you, is the battle for third. We're well into the closing stages of lap eight before we get on the penultimate lap, and then, of course, all hell will break loose going into the final lap if things stay the same as they are now. Tony Brown is now in fifth place. Fourth place, Stevens and Charlwood. Third place and the podium in sight for them as they go into the penultimate lap. Steve Kershaw and Rob Wilson having an absolutely cracking ride here. Here comes Stevens on the inside. Is there contact? No, there's not contact, but he's through. Up to third place. Kershaw then down in fourth. Sensational action here. This is what F1 sidecar racing is all about. No quarter asked, none given. Points mean everything. Stevens throwing it left. The wheel popped up. Ryan Charbon, who was that? Something happened. At oh, no! Tony Brown through the inside. Ashley Hawes catapulted. How did Kershaw miss that? Ashley Hawes is there. Tony Brown running away. They're both okay. The outfit upended. What dramatic stuff. Let's have a look at that. Stevens got it a bit sideways. Tony Brown flicked through underneath Kershaw. They're side by side. He gets the power on. Too much power on. Catapults Ashley Hawes away, who then gets up and runs for his life. And why wouldn't you? Massive. How lucky was Steve Kershaw to miss that? Negotiated his way around it. We have a red flag in the closing stages of the race. And this will be a count back. And on my reckoning, Kershaw was in third place at the start 
or the finish of the last lap. There's your race winner, Hegarty and Neve. I am absolutely breathless. What a terrific race at the front. And what a battle for third. Yes, Kershaw got it. Stevens credited with fourth. Chaplow, what a weekend he's had. Chaplow and France fifth. Peach, Holden, Drown. Best Dutchman again, Case Kedrop and Jeffrey Fair. Hagen, Billy Galros in 12th place is on Mark Edwards, Assured Office Solutions, Kawasaki, ahead of Roger Body and Jamie Wick. Sean Haggerty, James Neve, absolutely brilliant stuff. Double win, congratulations, both of you. It wasn't that easy, though, was it? A bit of a, a mix-up at the start? Yeah, Ricky just doesn't know how wide his bike is. He thinks he's on a solo all the bloody time. He ran in, it was down the straight. I don't have none of that. Ran outside every bug on the start, sod it. Good, good for you while well, you're there. Another 50 points, great weekend. Yeah, got a fantastic weekend. Uh, great racing and looking forward to Silverstone. What do you have to do to beat him, mate? Oh, goodness knows, I really don't know. <laughs> you know, I've got, an, I've got an engine there that's got probably 20 more horsepower than he's got, but, I mean, you know, Sean, he's just, he's just unbelievable. I really don't know. I mean, we're just trying as hard as we can. We try. I mean, we had the head off it last night. Uh, we had the, you know, head gasket issue last night. Um, that seems to have cured it, but, um, no, I just don't know what to do. I really don't. Steve Kershaw, Rob Wilson, well, fourth yesterday, one better today on the podium. How does that feel? Absolutely amazing. Absolutely fantastic. Fantastic, Barry. Um, a fantastic race as well. A real scrap all the way through. And uh, you kind of forget where you are. You know, you're concentrating on just fighting for position. And uh, what a race. I just like hope that the boys that had their off are, are OK. Yeah, they, they were up and jumping about. But, I mean, when something like that is as fast and frantic as that, there's no thought for yourself. It's adrenaline, adrenaline, isn't it? Uh, exactly. We, uh, we came out of the hairpin. Tony can completely side was in front of us. And I was just getting my head down because I thought we were going under the bike. And Steve, somehow, I don't know how he did it, but he managed to steer around them and kept us on the track. Good race, Carl, mate. Fantastic. You're a class act. Yes, and I'd just like to say thank you to all our sponsors, uh, Blink Bonnie Quarry and uh, Nick Garden and the Garlands and the, there's many more. Thank you very much. And the family, and uh, I've got to thank my wife as well. I'll get in trouble. Well, apart from Hegarty romping away, the big winner this weekend, Craig Chaplin and Patrick Farrance now solidly in third. The threat from Andy Peach and Charlie Richardson did not yet materialise, but they're still lurking there with two rounds to go. Ricky Stevens did himself a power of good. Hopefully we'll see Ben Bygrave, Justin Sharp back again. And further down the order, Ian Guy. He's just getting better all the time. He's there in 16th place. Once again here in Holland, we've been treated to two fantastic and eventful races. The sun shining on us, we're going back home because very, very shortly, in just two weeks, we're at Silverstone for the penultimate round in the Eastern Airways British F1 Sidecar Championship. Hope you enjoyed the show. Join us at Silverstone. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.